Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Railworld. In the previous episode, we set up some new production of Destroyer Drones. And in today's episode, we are finally going to be continuing our journey around the Great Lake. We now have something like five and a half stacks of Destroyer Drones. And that should be enough for us to complete the final stretch of our journey and complete the loop around the lake. So, I'm just doing a couple of last bits of work in the main base, uh, making sure that everything is running well and then we'll set off we'll have a couple of stops along the way we'll be stopping at mega copper one and the midpoint but we will eventually arrive at the railhead and start uh, pushing on uh, once again checking on um, alien artifacts making sure that we've uh, cleared out our inventory of those um, after our more, most recent uh, defensive run um, around the the perimeter um, of course the perimeter has now moved out and i haven't pushed the biters out any further um, so i'll have to see um, uh, well, I'll have to see how that goes uh, when I get back. It might be that the biters have taken out a couple of the radar stations. Um, I'm sort of expecting that, which is the reason why I armed, I armed and armoured them um, in the first place. There will probably be some attacks on them, but uh, ultimately the biters should not get as far as they um, had got previously because they'll just get distracted by all the radar stations everywhere to blow up and be blown up by. So um, I'm overseeing the last bits of flooring now. I want to make sure that the the base is fully floored, there's not like random little dots all over the place that need dealing with before we go. Um, also having a look at Iron Outpost 1, once again, it is continuing to dwindle. I think um, it will probably, it probably doesn't have long for this world at this point. It's running non-stop and it might even continue to do that while we're gone because uh, Destroyer Drone Production will use up uh, some materials and keep the circuits moving and things like that. Um, I'm also inspecting the train. All the cargo wagons are completely full of their cargoes. The only thing that we don't have uh, fully loaded is destroyers, and that's because that'll just never happen. Um, I don't know, now that we have the extra destroyer drone production, if we're gone for long enough, then when we get back, the mega train may be fully loaded um, by the, the stockpile that we'll have built up. But uh, if we really want to get a, like the train filled, we'd probably want to have like something like four assemblers for destroyers, which would just be stupid and insane and difficult to set up. We'd need, in fact, we'd need a whole extra base for it. We could, we could totally do that. We could have like another one beyond the circuit, uh, the circuit factory. We could have a, a dedicated um, destroyer drone factory, but that's a lot more complicated than a circuit factory. Circuit factory just has two inputs and one output. Um, a destroyer drone factory would have all sorts of things going in. I guess we just send in raw materials nearly. Then again, we'd need advanced circuits. That's something we'll, we'll think about in some distant future time. Um, it may turn out that we have enough destroyer drone production already to, to fill things up. But we're now uh, gearing our um, our inventory up. I've got 10 stacks of rails on me and a stack of curved rails. That should be enough uh, combined with what we already have in the train. That should be uh, enough, I imagine, to get us all the way back home. And then we'll just go back into the main base and do a little bit more flooring uh, with our little concrete template. Um, at this point, it should be fairly easy because the bots, well, the, all the templates sort of ran out at once for a second, so the... Uh, the concrete's had a little bit of time to build up, and there's only like a hundred squares or something to fill anyway, it would seem. Um, I'm not sure how many exactly. I can't quite see the, the number that's coming up on the on, on the job indicator list. But also, we just completed a bit of research we were doing. We were, for the first time in a very long time, actually doing some science, because there was a, a new bit of research that was introduced in a recent update, which allows you to get a fifth row of logistics slots. So we now have those. I'm probably not going to use them. Then again, I was using... Um, all my logistics slots before, so I guess now that I have more room, maybe I'll start making use of it. But um, enough talk. Let's set off. Oh no, wait. Oh, well, that's what I was thinking. I was going to say, let's go. And I was ready to press the button and everything. Then I thought, hang on, let me just check something for a second because I was thinking of loading some concrete into the rear cargo wagon. But I changed my mind when I realized that uh, A, um, it would just get unloaded into the, um, into the provided chests again, which would be annoying. I could stop that, but it would be some faff to set it up and then, then fix it again. Um, and also there wasn't much in the way of concrete available in the main base because it had all just been used for the flooring. So we'll just take five stacks with it and see how far we can get with that um, in Mega Copper 1. But here we are, we've uh, uh, completed our first leg of the journey. Um, so I guess we're like a quarter of the way around a lake, probably a little bit less around a lake, the lake. Um, but yes, we've arrived. It's been a while since we've been here because we often skip past this uh, as we go between the main base and the midpoint, but uh, we want to make sure everything's still running well, and it looks like it is. The belts are completely stopped, and then all the trains arrive, start being loaded, and things stop moving, but the belts don't really empty out very much. There's a little bit of trouble where um, the upper belt um, momentarily empties, but uh, I think the inserters were all still pretty much running at full pelt, and it's nothing to worry about. And even if it was a problem, there's not much we can really do about it, apart from 
um, I guess have some more, like have multiple belts going round and, and take, like hopping in and out um, so that we can get even faster throughput than a blue belt that's fully loaded can provide. Um, but the annoying thing is all the trains are arriving at once and I think in future I will set up a system where two trains can be uh, loaded at once. Um, hopefully that will allow more overtaking. It seems like they've all sort of synchronized so that they all arrive at the same time each time. Um, and then they all have to queue behind each other every time, which is no good. We want them to sort of spread out a bit more and be a bit more random. So if we have two stations, that should help to um, give the, the, the faster ones more opportunity to overtake the, uh, the slower ones. Um, but yes, we are now going to add in some more miners. There was a couple that we need to clear out. Not much has happened, really. Um, there's just so much ore here and so many miners covering it that it really takes a lot for any individual miners to run out, really. Um, so yeah, the fact the not the factory the the base has been doing well. It's um, been continuing uh, to just endlessly supply as well supply everything with all the copper. I don't think we're mining any copper from anywhere else. This is it's all coming from here, and there is still plenty more to go. This will probably supply us for the remainder of of the series. Um, though I've said things like that before, and I don't know how long the series will go on for, but it seems like an impossible task to clear out this much copper. Um, and I would be amazed if we, we actually managed it. I think but like before then we just start to have trouble like um, with throughput of, of the belts and getting enough ore onto the trains. Because uh, that, that seems to be more, more of a problem than the overall supply um, of ore. But anyway, what we're doing here is we're messing around with the belts and we're giving extra priority to a particular column. Because the original plan for this, uh, this outpost was that... Um, the two-line system would run a little bit further. I don't think I ever planned for it to run all the way to to the midpoint, but uh, I planned it for it. I planned for it to be just just a tiny bit further than it than it's gone, and everything ended up a bit cramped because there wasn't much room to maneuver. I had to turn it into a one-line system a little bit earlier than I wanted to. Um, and what I'm trying to do now is mine out the area where the second line will be. I want to do some modifications um, and make a lot more room in this base so that I can actually implement the. Uh, the multi-station idea a lot more easily. So I've given priority to one particular column um, and that column once mined away will allow me to put a second line running all the way through in the normal position um, and then we can have the loop on the end instead of something like that going into the uh, into the one line system. I don't know how far we'll go maybe we'll only have it move in a little bit and then the there'll still be a one line system there we'll have some sort of passing point set up there. We've got a passing point on the end of it but we'll move it around a bit Basically, I'm not happy with it. I want it to be neater, and I want there to be a little bit more space uh, for the trains to uh, move around. I could have always extended the actual size of the outpost, but I didn't want to do that because it was already um, bigger than it needed to be, I thought. So yes, um, I've done some more work uh, with the belts and stuff, but I'm still not happy with the situation. There was a point where the belt here was completely empty, which means that I could uh, potentially mine even more than I am. So what I'm going to do is increase the density of the miners. So I'm clearing out all the uh, all the substations because they're going to be in the way and then we'll mine away all of the miners and then just put them solid wall-to-wall -wall endless miners to get it cleared away as quickly as possible. This could backfire though because if you have the miners more compressed then it could mean that um, there's more sort of emphasis on the miners um, on the end of the line uh, doing all the work and the miners uh, at the, the output side um, can't do anything because the belt is always full so we could end up with it with like one side clearing quicker but the other side clearing much slower uh, which would be annoying uh, hopefully it'll just be done by the time we come back probably not though because there is a, a, a mammoth amount of, uh, of copper to be cleared away there um, and even though the factories are running quite well at the moment they'd still it'd still take them stupid amounts of time to get through this amount of copper we've had copper outposts before that have had um, less copper capacity than this one column, I'd say. But anyway, we're also going to compress the uh, the miners on the bottom half. They're actually more important in a way, because there, there are four central squares still free um, when you put in the like the two rails. So the miners on the bottom half of, the, of, the, of that belt are more important, because that's the ones that are actually on top of where the rails will one day be. Um, but we want to just mine the whole thing as quickly as possible and uh, get it dealt with. Anyway, some of the, the miners have made some decent progress. There is a fair chunk taken out on this end of the outpost, so we can actually do some uh, moving about. We can make things a little bit neater. Um, and so what we're going to do is shift this passing point around a bit because it was always awkward. There's an annoying kink in the system where it's there's a 90-degree turn. And I think it's like the only 90-degree turn in this entire system if you don't count the loops. Um, so that's no good. We want the uh, 
Um, we want it to be sort of more realistic in that there aren't random hairpin bends going on. Just ignore the fact that there are loops in the first place. But anyway, we're going to neaten it up and just turn it into a normal uh, 45 degree turn. I'm just steadily sort of switching things over, uh, putting in the new system, um, and then once it's ready to go, we'll quickly cut off the old one and then cut in the new one before um, it can cause any trouble for the train. So the thing is, there is one miner that is still in the way, but it has only got a tiny bit of ore left to mine, so all we need to do is wait like two minutes, um, and it's done. And in the meantime, we can finish neatening things up, and there we go, that miner, that miner has stopped now. We just need to finish putting in uh, the part with the belt split off here. We're making sure not to actually connect it up, because then we'll end up with blocks extending to places they shouldn't. Uh, but we can now get rid of that miner, and at this point everything is in place. We just quickly need to cut off the old stuff and connect it up, replace the uh, the signals, move that uh, that chain signal over, and we're good. And seconds after we put it in, a train goes flying past. You barely even see it in the corner of the screen, uh, but it seems to be working. I guess we'll we'll find out later on if we come back from our journey around the lake and everything stopped over here. Though I guess if we are coming back from our journey around the lake, it will be. Um, to Iron Outpost 2, we won't be going via here, but eventually we will loop back around and have a look at this stuff again. Um, there will be more work to do around the lake, uh, more things to build. I want to build another town um, in the north. I keep calling them towns, I've been I've been doing towns recently, uh, doing recording the episodes. Uh, but yes, we will want to build like another outpost of some description. I have a plan, um, I'll voice it when I'm more sure of it. Uh, we'll just work it out as we go along, really. Uh, but there we go, we've finished our work on the miners, and there's only one bit of business left to be done now. I tried putting down the concrete, by the way, and the, I barely covered anywhere with it. I had like 500 concrete, um, and we didn't get anywhere, but um, at some point we'll just have to come along with like a concrete train uh, from either the main base or the midpoint so we can get this covered properly. Not that it's really urgent, but I want to. Um, so yes, we've got some biters to deal with, a couple of bases have advanced towards the base. Um, they've not got particularly close, but it's always... Uh, it's always good to be sort of proactive and, and deal with them before they can become a danger. Also, they were getting fairly close to the uh, the pollution. Um, and pollution can be quite variable, so you never know. It could have extended out to these bases, and then we could have had all sorts of trouble. Though we do have plenty of defences there. Uh, but yeah, we'll cut these back. There's just two bases. Uh, we went for quite a minimal amount of um, of bots, but we, we managed it. We Occasionally it can be a bit dangerous uh, when I go for like more like 50 bots. Um, I can end up having to run away a bit and, and I lose quite a lot of shields, but uh, I'm trying to use the minimal amount because I want to save it all for the actual journey around the lake. I don't want to, like, be, like, in sight of Iron Outpost 2 and then not have not quite have the firepower to push through. Though at that point, we may just do a, a, a mad dash again. Uh, we could always build rails as the, the train drives, the only issue being the, uh, uh, the trees, which I think we would have to get out to shoot, um, and that would not go well. So I don't know, we'll work it out as the time comes. I think we will have enough materials to just punch our way through uh, with ease. And it'll be interesting to see what's going on with the biters that were chasing us when we last ran through there, because I don't know whether they're like still hanging around, whether they settled bases or they just despawned, or, or what. They might carry on running like towards Iron Outpost 2 uh, once we come into range of them and, and run away from us. But anyway, we have arrived in the midpoint, and unfortunately the, uh, the concrete orders that I last left have uh, timed out. But it is, it's now been long enough for the concrete su uh, supply to be completely refilled, so uh, the remainder of the work should be done with E. So we'll quickly run around with our template and just finish off uh, giving them all the concreting orders. And uh, leave them with that to do uh, while we carry on around. We'll, we'll check up on the other operations of the midpoint base. It's fairly normal, everything should be fine. Um, but with the mega train arriving, it will give the... Uh, the base more work to do because there are a couple of things that require mega train supplied materials to be uh, produced. Uh, the most important of those I would say being uh, destroyer drones which use speed modules and uh, the only supply of speed modules this base has is uh, via the mega train. It could get some made itself but I guess it would need um, advanced circuits and I can't remember whether, I don't think they're made here because uh, they'd need plastic and there's no sort of continuous plastic supply but I think plastic is also supplied by the mega train so who knows what's happening. Um, there's also sorts of like random bits of production, some of which are relying on uh, on other trains, some relying on just the materials that are already present in the base, and some relying on the mega trains deliveries. But um, it's not particularly important. What we what matters is uh, destroyer drones and rails, and we are fine in both respects. 
Um, also, checking up on th other things that are also fine, the power is doing fantastically, even though we've just had this sudden spike in, in everything, uh, the power is still running absolutely fine. Um, it may be partially because like a lot of the furnaces are still off and things. Still, a th like things are still a lot quieter than when I originally built the base. Um, and I think the only way that I could get the base running at sort of its peak rate again would be if I turned up and the mega train was half empty because I'd built like a like another base somewhere. And that's entirely possible. That's that's my plan. Um, though I probably won't be coming back to the midpoint. I'd probably just go back to the main base, uh, depending on on the situation. But anyway, uh, we will also deal with the ba uh, with the bases, the biter bases. Um, around uh, the midpoints. There's a couple more here to deal with just because it's a larger area and there's more um, space for the biters to move in. These bases are all not particularly big so it, it's not too much of a problem to deal with them. Once again trying to run on sort of minimal uh, a, a minimal supply of bots. We've got something like 15 uh, stacks we... well not stacks, 15 stacks of bots. We've got something like 15 uh, deployments we do um, in the total thing, or maybe it's 20. Um, there's a couple of, of dangerous moments where I, I, I go in with uh, too few bots. I think in this particular one, all the bots explode as I'm going in, like the, the entire first batch disappears, and I end up having to sort of run away from the, the biters. But luckily I can sort of kite them away, and, uh, and then deal with the base while they're still chasing me. And then there's one more base over here, uh, with quite a lot of worms. We have to run away though, because I run in before I fully recharge my shields, and as it turns out, that's a bad idea. Um, and they very nearly punch through them, but we managed to... Uh, uh, to push back and take them out. There's also a couple of red dots um, in a sort of weird pattern on the radar, but as I approach them, they disappear. So I guess the um, uh, the radars in the midpoint managed to scan them um, as there were some biters running through, I guess, to do some colonization, something like that. I don't think there have been any actual attacks on the midpoint. Um, if there have, I haven't noticed them particularly, or I've just forgotten that they ever happened, in which case they probably weren't that, uh, that bad in the first place. But there we go. The, bi the biters have been dealt with. Uh, and we'll just quickly run through the mining area, clear out the uh, the old shutdown miners, and then we'll once again prepare to set off. We'll make sure our inventory is still uh, nicely arranged. We'll make sure that the the mega train is well supplied. It's been resupplied on concrete, um, seeing as that is being made um, in crazy amounts here. Um, we used up most of it to, to get that last bit of the concreting done, but the area is now fully covered. We could go further. We could do some more uh, flooring underneath, like the. Uh, the solar panels and the accumulators and stuff, but that's really not important. Uh, but yes, one more check over of the mega train, each of the cargo wagons. There's a lot more gaps now, just because of random things being unloaded uh, for the midpoint production. Uh, but nothing urgent has been taken. Um, and this run will probably just be another rail building run, uh, followed by a resupply before we do um, any runs where we actually start building stuff. At some point we'll do a big run where we put in all the, the radar stations. I will work that out at some point. We'll probably need... I'll probably bring a different train for that one with like one engine on either end and uh, and like one cargo wagon in the middle full of solar panels or something. Um, that'll be quite fun. And then we'll finally uh, have a chance to scan the internals of the lake and see how many islands there are there because I'm quite interested to see what the situation is with that. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to scan the entire the entirety of the uh, the lake, but I'm not completely sure. We'll have to see. Uh, how that goes. But here we go, we are setting off once again, we put one engine on the back of the mega train so that in an emergency we can set a course for ARG station which is still uh, in place in the midpoint. But uh, we've locked in the uh, the destination of A station which uh, we've got, uh, we left it on the end of the line last time we were here so the train will just automatically uh, run along. Um, a little bit slower than when we were coming back, we had like five engines coming back, we've just got the normal two this time. Um, so we're not, uh, we've only got one engine on the back facing the wrong way that seems to so, sort of slow us down a lot. But yes, this is probably one of the longest journeys that we've ever, long, longest continuous journeys that we've ever done. Because we've, I mean, we've been to the midpoint and that's a long journey in itself. But uh, we've had stop off points and, and things like that. And the trains had to stop and wait for the trains to pass. But this one is just an endless running along the same one line. But anyway, we arrive in the middle of a forest ready to start going uh, to the south for the final time, the point where we started running for our lives um, in our first journey around the lake. And seeing as we've got uh, like a, a minute left, uh, we'll just quickly have a run around and do a bit of scanning, because I realise I've sort of forgotten one of the, the aims of this was to sort of uh, try and scan as far into the lake as we can, just with our own personal uh, scanning ability. So I quickly run around all the edges of this bit of uh, outcropping here so we can get uh, the best coverage possible. There's not much out there. There is one island with some biters on it. We could possibly swing some destroyers over onto it and uh, deal with them in that way, but uh, we'll see about doing that sometime in the future. Um, but yes, we'll quickly go around that bit 
And that is uh, as much as we can scan this little section of the of the lake here. So we'll make our way back over to the train and I shall say goodbye. Thank you for watching and I shall see you next time.